In this video, we're going to look at the Gibbs energy that occurs once we reach equilibrium and how we can reach that minimum value and use it to find what the extent of a reaction is. So the reaction we're going to use is this EZ isomerization of 2-butene. So you have the Z isomer where the methyl groups are on the same side, and you have the E isomer where they're on the opposite sides. And we're going to denote these uh, chemical species by Z for our reactant and E for our product. And these are again in the gas phase as we have been doing thus far throughout this chemical equilibrium series. And they have standard Gibbs energy of formations, which we're going to use later, of 65.9 kilojoules per mole and 63.0 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we want to calculate the extent of reaction. So first thing we need to do is set up an ice table to figure out how many moles of each species is present at equilibrium. So we're going to have the Z reactant, the E product, and the total number of moles here. And we're going to see their initial values, their change in those values, and their equilibrium values for number of moles. All right, so let's just again assume that we have one mole of Z and zero moles of E to start out with, giving us one plus zero is one total mole of initial uh, conditions. And then throughout the course of the reaction, the extent of the reaction tells us that the change in Z will be minus C, minus extent of reaction, minus C moles, will produce positive Z, positive C values of E, and the change in the total number of moles during the course of reaction is minus C plus C, which is zero. Then the, the equilibrium value for moles of Z is going to be 1 minus C, and then for E is going to be plus C, <clears throat> and our equilibrium number of moles, total number of moles is going to be constant at 1. Okay, so let's get these in terms of pressures for these individual uh, reactants and products. So we have our PZ pressure of the reactant is going to equal its mole fraction times the total pressure. So we're going to have 1 minus C divided by 1 is the total number of moles. And then that times the total pressure, which is P. So this one goes away because that's just the one. And we're going to assume that we're at a standard pressure of one bar. So we're going to assume that we're in units of bar and that we're at a constant pressure of one bar. So I'm going to say that this is just 1 minus C for our pressure of Z. So we're going to assume P equals P naught, which is one bar. And our pressure for E <clears throat> is its mole fraction, C divided by 1, number of moles of it divided by total number of moles, times total pressure, which again is 1. So its pressure is just going to be C bar as well. Okay, so that's going to give us an equilibrium constant. Our Kp is going to be Pe divided by PZ, which is going to be, according to these values, C over 1 minus C. Okay, so that's <clears throat> easy enough to deal with. That's our uh, equilibrium constant there. But instead of looking at this in terms of the uh, standard Gibbs energy of reaction, let's take a different route and look at it explicitly in terms of the Gibbs energy of the products and reactants and see what happens when we uh, take that value. So <clears throat> what we want is we want, if I choose a better color there, so we want G as a function of extent of reaction. We want the Gibbs energy of the reaction, so the Gibbs energy of everything involved here, as a function of the extent of reaction C, that number of moles. So that's going to be, there's going to be 1 minus C <clears throat> time, moles 
times the molar Gibbs energy of Z plus, and there's going to be C moles times the molar Gibbs energy of E. Okay, so what are these individual values here? So if we want to look at the Gibbs energy of an individual chemical species in the gas phase, we have that it's molar Gibbs energy is equal to some standard Gibbs energy plus RT, gas constant times temperature, times natural log of its pressure. Okay, so we can take in for our Z and E reactant and product what these individual values are because we've calculated their pressures and we have a standard state here because we've defined our uh, Gibbs energy of formation as being our standard state here. So we can say that G of C is equal to substitute in some values here. We'll have 1 minus C of our standard Gibbs energy of formation for Z is 65.9 kilojoules per mole. So we're working in terms of units of kilojoules per mole here. Plus C moles of 63.0 kilojoules per mole of E. And then we have these extra terms here that we tack on for the pressure dependence. So we have plus RT natural log um, pressure of Z as we saw. Oh, we have to add a number of moles as well. So I'm going to factor out this RT for these pressure terms here. There's again going to be 1 minus C moles of Z times the natural log of the pressure of Z. So this, this is the terms for Z here up in terms of its number of moles. Z is 1 minus C. Then plus RT, which I've already factored out. Um, and then number of moles of E, which there are C moles of E at equilibrium, times natural log of the pressure of E, which in this case is again C. Okay, so that is our Gibbs energy as a function of the extent of reaction. Now, what happens when we say this is at a minimum? So, um, at a given minimum here, at the minimum value of the Gibbs energy, that is when we are at equilibrium. So this value being a minimum at equilibrium means that it is a stationary point relative to the extent of reaction. So that means that our partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction equals zero. So at equilibrium, we can differentiate this value here with respect to C and then set that equal to zero and that will give us what the equilibrium extent of reaction is going to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have various terms here. <clears throat> um, constants aren't going to matter because a constant does not have a derivative with respect to C. So I'm going to try to organize this in terms of values um, which do have some sort of explicit dependence on the value of C. So let's go ahead and reorganize our G of C here. That's going to equal, um, this one is just going to be 65.9, so we're not particularly interested in that. But we have minus C 65.9 plus C 63.0. So that's going to give us plus C times the difference between these two, which is um, 63.0 minus 65.9, so that's going to be minus 2.9 in there. Okay, that's those terms. And then we have plus RT um, and all these terms within parentheses there. So plus RT, and I'm just going to say dot, 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 you know, that that represents those terms within parentheses there. 
Okay, so DG with respect to C is equal to, well, this term goes to zero, no derivative. Um, this term, just drop out the C, it's linear in C, so you get minus 2.9. For the terms in parentheses here, it's nice to make use of the derivative of ddx of x log x, which is equal to 1 plus log x. So if you use that and work through all the algebra involved in that, and then there's also some uh, chain rules and product rules and various things going on in there. But if you end up doing that, um, you can take my word for it or do the, al do the algebra yourself that this ends up being minus 2.9 plus RT and you can simplify this into log C of 1 minus C which is equal to 0. But what you might also notice here is by the time we did this explicit differentiation what did this come out to be? Well this minus 2.9 this is the standard Gibbs energy of reaction. That's the standard Gibbs energy of formation of the product minus standard Gibbs energy of formation of the reactant. So this is actually delta RG naught. And that popped out of these first two terms here in terms of the standard Gibbs energy of the reactants and products times their stoichiometric coefficients there. Okay, so that gave us the standard Gibbs energy of reaction and then plus RT, let me do a different color here as well, plus RT log, and we have the C over 1 minus C, which you'll notice, very non-coincidentally, is equal to the equilibrium constant. So that is equal to KP, and then notice that the value here of partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction, that was our, in our first video in equilibrium, the definition of delta G of reaction, which is equal to that value. And so delta G of reaction is, is at equilibrium whenever we are at a minimum here. So that is equal to zero. So what we end up getting, due to the fact that this ends up being zero, is we get that delta G of reaction equals minus RT log KP. So even though we derived this from a completely different method, we explicitly minimized the Gibbs energy of the total reaction here, we arrive at the same equation. So this should give you some validation that these equations for delta G of reaction and for the standard Gibbs energy of reaction that these values are you know they're not made up they're something that are demonstrate something very deep about the behavior of chemical systems and the behavior of equilibrium but for this particular purpose um, we are interested in what the specific equilibrium value is because we were going through this example so I'm going to finish off that example so doing so gives us the fact that we have our delta RG naught, which we have is minus 2.9 point, minus here. So we have that value um, times minus RT log KP. We can plug in some values here. So you have our equilibrium constant KP if we rearrange this equation here, we have that Kp equals E to the minus delta Rg naught over Rt. And we can substitute in some values there. We'll have Kp equals continued on the next line here. So del minus delta Rg naught, delta Rg naught is minus 2.9, so minus minus 2.9 is plus 2.9, so it's going to be e to the 2.9 divided by rt. Um, if we assume this to be at um, 
298, for example, then RT in terms of kilojoules per mole at 298 is going to be 2.5 kilojoules per mole. So that's going to vary by temperature, but and also make sure that you have the correct units on R. But it gives us E to the 2.9 over 2.5, which is about E to the 1.1 or so, which gives us that our equilibrium constant is 3.190. So this gives us that 3.190 is equal to our extent of reaction C over 1 minus C. So C over 1 minus C equals 3.190. Then we do a tiny bit more of algebra in order to solve that final uh, expression there. And what we end up getting is our extent of reaction equals 0 0.76. So we go 7 .6, 0 0.76 moles forward. So our equilibrium, if we're assuming we're at one bar of total pressure here, then our equilibrium pressure of our products and reactants are that our P of Z is 1 minus 0 0.76. So we have 0. Point, if I could write zeros, if we have 0 0.24 bar of Z of our reactant, and we have 0 0.76 C bar of our product. So you notice that the, the standard Gibbs energy of, re, of reaction, or the Gibbs energy of reaction in this case, was negative. So we pushed, and you actually get more reactant than product because this uh, arrangement here, this particular set of initial conditions, made it favorable for us to go primarily to the product rather than to the reactant. And that is to be expected based off of the fact that our reactant, our uh, product here has a lower Gibbs energy of formation than our reactant.